Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Kaufman, and we're about to go beyond the terminus. One of the most important parts of clinical anodontics is obtaining proper working length. This ensures that instruments that you place in the canal system are controlled and the canal is cleaned as thoroughly as possible. Aside from using the 2D radiograph and 3D imaging techniques, the most common method of working length determination is using the electronic apex locator. During my postgraduate training in the mid-1980s, the use of an electronic apex locator was forbidden in the clinic. The only gauge that we had to use to determine working length was the 2D radiograph in combination with tactile feel. Most often, working length was determined through the use of radiographic terminus as the reference point. Needless to say, many of these cases were instrumented long because the radiographic terminus and the actual position of the foramen was not entirely coincident in many cases. As endodontics advanced in technology, different generations of apex locators were created, each improving upon the accuracy of the previous versions. Initial apex locators consisted of LEDs that showed whether you were short at the apex or long, and these corresponded with an audio tone. The most recent versions now have fancy displays that show an illustration of the apex as a graphic diagram of the file as it proceeds or advances toward the end of the canal. While they may be attractive in appearance, they rarely correspond to the actual apical canal anatomy and how a file actually looks in the canal. It's been my experience that most of these apex locators work best dry, though they do claim that they can be used in the presence of sodium hypochlorite. Many of my cases are being treated through metallic restorations, and this can sometimes interfere with the readings obtained by the locator. Also, contacting the alloy with the file being used to measure the canal will result in a long canal indication. It's basically shorted out. This is especially true with more constricted conservative accesses that are now being advocated. I prefer the fork attachment rather than the spring-loaded clip when attaching it to a file. It's quicker, but it does require good, solid, consistent contact with the metallic portion of the file in order to obtain good signal and proper working length reading. It also allows me to obtain separate quick working lengths when multiple files are placed in the tooth at the same time. CBCT imaging has also revolutionized the ability to more accurately determine the working length. The nature of CBCT imaging means that there's no distortions as they are in 2D imaging. Furthermore, one can often very easily see the difference between the radiographic terminus and the actual exit of the foramen when using CBCT versus 2D imaging. So how do we get the most reliable readings when we're using an apex locator? Firstly, it's been my experience that while apex locators can work wet, they measure best in a dry environment. Secondly, ensure that the proper lip ground at all times. Make sure the ground is securely placed in the patient's mouth. Check for open leads. In other words, check for conductivity. These leads frequently have to be replaced in my office. I'm actually quite surprised that they're not made with aircraft cable or something stronger because they're rather expensive to replace. Thirdly, the size of the file must approximate the size of the foramen for best readings. Using a small diameter file in a large canal will invariably give you inconsistent readings. The readings should show a gradual migration of the lights toward the apex with a reproducible zero reading to confirm working length. Look for a transition as you move the file into position. A slow increase in the beeps. Give the gauging file a slight twist in and out and watch for this transition. If you're an experienced clinician, trust your instincts. If a working length doesn't seem right, it most likely is not. If you've measured the approximate working length in a 3D image and your apex locator reading is significantly different, Reevaluate using the tips that I just mentioned. Your electronic working length and 3D working length should be very close. The last method of working length determination involves the use of a paper point after the canal has been prepared. This is referred to as the Rosenberg paper point technique, which was written in a journal article by Dave Rosenberg, a very talented endodontist who suggested that the best way we could try to envision the actual foramen shape was to place a paper point to the end of the canal and examine the pattern of the bleeding point on the paper point when it was removed. This would eliminate the problem of distortion as viewed in the 2D image. 
It's based upon obtaining a canal that is reasonably dry and that when a paper point contacts the PDL space, the pattern of the hemorrhage as visualized on the end of the paper point will give you some idea as to the shape of the foramen where it exits the root. I try to use all methods to determine working length in order to tame the most accurate position from my cone fit and where I want my endodontic filling material to end. Get your primary working length from your radiograph and a wet electronic reading. Get the final working length determination and apical gauging with, number one, how does the file feel when it goes to the apex? Does it go through? If it does, go up a size when using the electronic apex locator. Gauge the apex. It will assist you with your cone fit. Make sure that the cone doesn't slide out. Make sure that you have enough taper that the cone does not bind in the body. Secondly, use the apex locator dry if necessary after preparation to reconfirm the working length before obturation. Thirdly, use the Rosenberg paper point technique. Get data from each instrument that you place in the canal, whether it's a file, a syringe tip, a locator, a paper point, a cone fit. Each of these instruments assist us with determining where the end of the canal is. If you're unable to get a, working, a file to the working length, work the body more. Never force a file. That's a recipe for perforation. I hope these tips will help you with determining working length in your cases and getting a better result overall. Remember, when we do the right thing, both of us get better, patients and clinicians. Please remember to subscribe. Check in frequently for new material. Tell your colleagues and friends. Don't forget to like. I thank you again for joining me. I hope you can do that again soon when we go on another trip beyond the terminus. See you then.